Well, hey there, American Farmstead Hers. This is Jenny with the Gramstead Family Farm. And Donna with Hazel Bell Farm. And we are coming to y'all from Northeast Florida as two American Farmstead Hers doing our best to grow our own food and share our homesteading experiences with you in hopes that you would grow a little food of your own. Yep. And this week we are kind of doing a reaction recording. Yeah. A little bit. So uh, we're in Florida, of course, like we've said many times before. And um, a lot of counties in Florida have instituted a fertilizer ban. Right? Yes. Um, let's talk about why that is, and then we'll get into what we think about it and how to deal with it. Yeah. With the little that I have read up on it, it really has to do about the massive amounts of waterways that we have in Florida and the aquifer. Right. And basically, uh, fertilizers, specifically nitrogen and phosphorus, are getting into our waterways and starting to cause some problems. Yeah, so those problems are related to red tide and the blue-green algae blooms that then cause fish kills, um, organ shutdowns, and people. <laughs> like there's some, there are some serious issues with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it is, it is an issue. Yeah. Um, it's just unfortunately, unfortunate that it comes in way of a fertilizer ban um, right in the middle of our summer gardening season. Mm-hmm. And as we're approaching the fall gardening season, when we're going to need to be amending our beds right. um, so we can feed those fall and winter crops. So this ban is generally from June 1st to September 1st in several counties in Florida, mostly South Florida and Central Florida area, around the Tampa Bay area, Hillsborough County, I remember reading um, yeah. in that, that general area. So um, here is what you can do instead if you can't buy fertilizer. Yeah, because it, this isn't just a one-time issue. I don't think this is something Mm-mm. that's going to go away. I think that we, we you know... It, in doing the very little bit of research that I did on this, I mean, we were finding articles dated back a couple years ago right? Um, with the same types of issues and the same similar bans. And it so, seems like it has just grown. So I, yeah, like you said, it's not going right. anywhere. It's not going away. So I think that the important thing is here is to um, figure out how we can work around this and maybe fertilize our gardens uh, with something that we're not, you know, relying on a store to go buy. Right. And I guess it covers anything with an NPK rating. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. 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 Anything with an NPK rating, it's going to cover. So um, from my understanding, it doesn't, um, the fertilizer ban, it doesn't ban stores from selling what they have in stock. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just a code enforcement issue, Mm -hmm. like if you actually go spread fertilizer. Right. So. Right. um, But there's lots of ways that we can work around it. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, so when we first talked about this, I thought back to my early gardens Yeah, and, um, I've mentioned before, I didn't use any fertilizer. Um, our dirt or our soil was scooped out of a cow pen. Right. And so it was full of fertilizer (laughs) without having to buy any amendments. Um, it was also full of weed seeds. Um, that's when we learned about fireweed too. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And tropical soda apple and things like that. But yeah, um, manures, composted manures, um, anything like that, those always work. But then I also thought about, um, you know, my boys were young then and we were starting to homeschool. And one of the things that my boys were super fascinated with in that first year of homeschooling was Squanto and the first Thanksgiving. Okay. And wherever you stand on that, like whatever. But one of the things that they came away with was using fish as fertilizer to grow your crops. Yeah. And that turned into what else can we bury? (laughs) <laughs> yeah. You know, in our little hunting and fishing family. Right. Well, it's funny that you bring up fish because uh, currently in my garden, mm-hmm. okay, so we have an above ground swimming pool at our house that the it had um, one of those salt chlorine generators on it. Right. So we were just doing the salt water pool thing for a while and that part broke and it was like a $500 part. And I didn't want to keep the pool going and spend money on expensive chemical chlorines and stuff like that. So we just let the pool go. And my homeschool boys that like to fish thought it would be a fantastic idea to go down to the road and catch bass out of the pond and bring them back to our pool. And so we acquired a pretty fair amount of fish in our above ground pool. 
Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. And they lived in there for a really long time. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, there was one day I looked at the pool and noticed that the water color had completely changed like overnight. Mm. Like it went from like an algae green color to like a muddy gray color almost. Weird. And I thought, well, that's weird. Mm-hmm. And so went on about my business. The very next day, I'm outside and I'm like, what is that smell? Mm. And my son was outside with me and he's like, oh my gosh, mom, all the fish are dead. And so they had all floated to the top of the pool. Huge bass. And so I'm like, dude, you have to get those out of there. (laughs) And he's like, what do I do with them? And my first initial thought was just go, just go drop them off in the woods. You know, the coyotes will eat them, Uh whatever. uh And then I stopped him, and I'm like, no, no, don't take the fish to the woods. Put them in a five-gallon bucket for me, and I'll take care of them. Nice. And so um, he did, and so I was rummaging around the outside of our barn, which has stuff everywhere, and we had a, um, it was a cooler that has, like, a broken top on it, but it's one of those tall, like, circular coolers that, Uh like, uh with the drink spigot things Right, like a water cooler. Yeah, and so it's like... I think like a 10 gallon, Uh you know, water cooler, but part of it was broke. The top was broke. And I was like, that's perfect. So I dumped all those fish in the bucket and filled it up with water and put the top on there as best as I could. And so that is currently in my garden right now. And it really smells. <laughs> did you did you top it off with water? <laughs> I topped it off with water. So there's like five huge bass in this 10-gallon bucket of water in my garden currently. Oh, my gross. <laughs> so gross. <laughs> you don't, so here's the thing I hear a lot um, when we talk about like burying right. carcasses in the garden. People are concerned about wildlife digging it up. You haven't had any issue with raccoons or anything? No, haven't had any issues. One of my livestock guardian Mm -hmm. dogs are right there, though. Right, right. So um, the rodents only really have one way to access the garden. And knock on wood, we haven't really had any, like, issues with, Mm -hmm. like, bunnies and stuff Mm -hmm. like that in the garden yet this year. So I'm hoping Mm -hmm. that that won't happen. Um, so I plan on just leave, and I've done this one other time with rotting fish down in water. I Mm -hmm. plan on just leaving it in there until it really just doesn't smell that bad anymore. Mm -hmm. And then at that point I can strain it and use that water to fertilize the garden. You don't even have to strain it if it's got that spigot. Right. Right. Well, that might get clogged up though. There's a lot of fish parts in there. It sounds so gross. (laughs) I, you know what I would do? Yeah. I would do it like you're saying, and then get the, the big pieces to get the chunks out yeah, and bury that in the garden. Absolutely. And yeah. Pick a fruit tree to bury it by. Right. Right. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> Animal manure and dead animals. <laughs> That's how you get around it. Well, and another, <clears throat> you know, and, and the way that I look at that is, I mean, that is a completely free way mm-hmm. to fertilize your garden from something that would have been just wasted. Right. Um, So another thing that you can do that is a completely free way to make a ton of fertilizer is a bucket of swamp water. Right. That's what I was just thinking. Yes. So my boys, um, my boys fish and, um, I may even throw the fish in the swamp water. Well, that's what I was going to say last weekend. They caught some fish and I told them like, Hey, when, when you're done cleaning the fish, I want, I want the carcasses. I want the bone. And they were like the bones. I said, yeah, I want all of it. All of it. And they, you know, I, so I told them just like wrap them up and put them in our big free. So um, they're waiting on me. So I've got now yeah. a half a bucket of chicken blood. Yeah. <laughs> right? Right. I've got um, the fish carcasses. Right. And I've got, I'm getting ready to clean out my chicken coop, which I don't have to do very often because most of the time my chicken's free range and the sand. We have so much sand. Right. Like it just eats everything up. So it I does. don't have to like scrape it out very yeah. often, um, but it is time to do that. So I'll have that. And Mm -hmm. I was also thinking just like, you know, garden waste I've got. Yeah, I mean, you can go around and and my favorite thing to put in the swamp water is the clippings from my tomato prunings. Mm -hmm. Like you can get so many green clippings off of your tomato plants when you go and prune them. So yeah, any type of vegetation that you have, Mm -hmm. any animal manures, which be careful with cow manure or ruminant manure because of herbicides and such, but... Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, put all that stuff in a big 55 gallon drum mm-hmm. and 
cover it with water and, and just, just let it sit. Just let it sit until it doesn't smell absolutely rancid. I mean, it's you still, gotta have it's a cover still gonna on it. have a smell. It does still smell. Right. But I mean, now that I've been doing swamp water for a couple of years now, like there's there's the rotting down stage smell. Right. And then there's the it's finished rotting down. It still stinks. It's the it's like, but it's it's an earthy usable. It is. It, like it smells like fertilizer. Yeah, it I, actually you know? kind of does. It doesn't smell like rotting. Right. Flesh. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, a barrel of swamp water is an excellent way mm-hmm. to get around the fertilizer ban. Um, anytime I water with it, I am always surprised the next day when I go back through the garden. Yeah. Another thing people don't talk about very much, but it's another one of your weird, all of our stuff I feel like is weird, weird. so far. So We're all like, weird. Why don't we just stay on this train? Um, urine. Yeah. Right? Right. So you can do some urine yes. collection and yes. water that down and water your plants with it. Yes. Mm-hmm. So you obviously want to make sure that it's, you know, urine that's not like medicated. Right. Um, you know, so if you're on any prescription medication or anything like that, that's all going to be excreted in your urine. I have also read if you have... Um, if you're collecting or you're giving and you are like on a keto type diet where you have high ketones in your okay. urine that you wouldn't want to use that. Interesting. And I don't remember why, but I have read that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, so urine, that's, I mean, it's nitrates. It's for free. It's right. It's free. You know, you just want to make sure that you dilute it. <laughs> yes. Dilute. Water yeah, it down. I think it's 10 to one. Yeah. For urine. So that sounds right. I think, I think it's the same as, is blood 100 to one? I don't know. I don't know. I just, whenever I have a bunch of blood, I, it just goes right in my swamp water. Yeah, it just goes, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, so I might have like two and a half gallons of blood from a chicken butcher, and mm-hmm. it goes in a 55-gallon drum. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty heavily diluted. Yeah. I don't know if it's 100 to 1. No. Not that diluted. But it's but. also, <laughs> it's you, again, when we put it in there, we let it sit and rot and break yeah. down, so it's not, it's not so strong and fresh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else? What else can we do? Cover crops. Cover crops. Green this manures. is the perfect time right now. I mean, where we're at in Florida, mm-hmm. I know I have probably about two and a half to three big long garden rows mm-hmm. that I'm just not super interested in sowing anything in there, but I don't want to leave that soil bare, especially mm-hmm. if I know that I'm not going to be able to buy any fertilizer until after September. Mm-hmm. And who knows if it's really going to let up then. Right. You know? Right. Like at the beginning of COVID, well, it was just a few weeks. Right. And, right. Exactly. <laughs> Here we are. Right. Um, the other thing is like, e- e- even if you can buy fertilizer today, you right. know, it's may- maybe your area is not an issue or it's just not an issue for you. Um, Cover I, crops are just a great way to feed the soil. I mean, it's just a, a sustainable, very low input way. Um, yeah. You know, you can do it in ways where you're saving seeds even. Right. And to close the loop. I mean, if you if you really nerd out on it. Yeah. But. Yeah. So I think I'm going to be sowing um, sun hemp and cow peas together. Mm-hmm. And so I'll be able to harvest a little bit of food from that. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, the chop and drop that I'll get from both of those plants combined mm-hmm. should be an amazing addition to those those rows in my garden, which are like the less amended rows. They're mm-hmm. the newest rows mm-hmm. of the garden, so they're super sandy. Yeah. So they could really use a good cover crop. Mine too. I have the sun hemp also we got from Sam. Yes, yeah. we got from Scrublands. Yeah, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do... Um, which I've is got... a nitrogen fixer like your cow right. peas. Like, right. And those sun hemp leaves are full of nitrogen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so any any kind of legume to go with that would yeah. be good. So you, what kind did you say? I'm cow gonna, peas? Yeah, I'm going to do cow peas. I've got some zipper pea seeds. Yeah. Um, I've got some speckled cow pea seeds that I'll probably throw in there. So I'm going to do Puerto Rican black beans. Nice. Yeah. So that's when that comes recommended for our area. Yeah. Um, they're a good a good drying bean. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. And then chop it. Chop and drop. And which is going to be mow it. <laughs> Honestly, right. I'm going to mow it and I'm going to tarp it. Mm-hmm. So, and hopefully, I hope I can really, like, really do good on my in ground beds this year before the next season yeah. in the fall to plant. So, yeah. Um, we have talked a little bit here and there about 
worm farming too. Yes, something that I have wanted to do for years, but it's just one of those things that I haven't really... Not been the priority. Not the, not been the priority. Mm-hmm. I mean, because I make big batches of regular compost. So I have that, which is another way that you can yeah. <laughs> feed your garden for free, like make your own compost. Right. Um, it's so doable. But um, worm bin farming in particular... Um, is really great for small spaces. Mm -hmm. And from what I understand, it's a really quick turnaround time for fertilizer. For fertilizer, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you can make a tea with it. It's not just good for the soil, but it's good as a foliar spray. Yeah. Um, There's all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's full of nutrients. And studies have shown, like, people who use worm castings in their garden over time, that really helps to build your soil structure. Yeah. Um, It's loaded with beneficial microbes and beneficial bacteria. I mean, worm (coughs) castings are a win-win. Right. Yeah. That's my next project I'm looking to start. I'm super excited because, again, it's one of those things I've wanted to do for a long time. I actually have like a worm tower kind of setup I can Uh use. Uh I don't understand it, and I really don't want to. I'm giving that away (laughs) to some children. So is this like a worm tower that you put like... If you like, so you like sink it into the middle of a raised bed. Mm-mm. Okay. No, it has like a little stand, like four legs. Okay. A bottom tray. That tray has a spigot that you you can like empty what the you know the leachate, I guess. Okay. Um, and so you start it in the bottom, and then you add these trays. That each tray has like a mesh grid bottom. Okay. So worms can get up and down through them. Um. It, it was left behind by the sellers of our house, uh-huh. and I was really excited to have it. I did some research. was like, I don't think this is what I want. Yeah. Um, you're, you're confined to just that size. It's real small. It's like, I don't know, a foot and a half by a foot and a half. Okay. And um, you, I guess you could add as many trays as you wanted vertically, but I think I have like six or seven trays for it. I've already promised it to some homeschool kids. <laughs> Right. I mean, that could make a good homeschool project. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm gonna do the cooler thing. um, Right. Where people are using. I understand the cooler thing, as in a cooler. A cooler. Not like the cool kids. The cooler thing. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe it's cooler. I don't know. We'll see. So I have a big broken cooler. Okay. That so it's insulated. Yes. And which is important in Florida because your worm bins need to be between sixty and eighty degrees. Right. The super cold temps will kill them and the super high heat will kill them. Right. So I'm thinking if I sink the cooler into the ground, yeah. it'll it'll be that much more insulated. Yeah. Right? It'll be more like ground temp and, and it'll be in the shade also. Yeah. So I think all of those things will help. I'm going to give it my very best try and, um, yeah, you know, but I, I guess I need, I, I'm still researching. I'm in the research phase of this. Okay. So I'm hoping to get it started like next week, but well, I was. I know, right. However, I ha- so gonna. I was it, I was making compost in it <laughs> last year, which composted down beautifully. Right. Except the volunteer tomatoes came up in it, and those are my best tomatoes right, right now. now. So I can't take those out. No. You know, I have to wait till I get those tomatoes off. I think it'll be next week. Yeah. But. Um, I think you're on the right track, though, with the cooler, um, because from what I understand, your worm bin, you do want smooth sides on it Mm -hmm. and and sides that, um, you know, you want them tall enough to where the worms aren't going to escape, which is where the smoothness helps. Mm -hmm. Um, But then you don't want your you don't want your walls too high because you want heat to be able to escape from there easily. So if your walls are a little bit shorter, your ventilation is going to be a little bit better, which is important. Okay. Okay. So it has a lid. Yeah. I'm wondering, do I leave the lid like cracked on it or do I put hole, drill holes in the sides on the top? Like yeah. you see people do in these like I double saw, bin systems. Yeah. I saw um, Elise Pickett from the Herb, Urban Harvest. Yes. The Urban Harvest. The, Urban, the UrbanHarvest.com, I believe is her website. Um, she's on YouTube too. So, I mean, if y'all want to watch a fabulous Florida gardener, check fantastic out. Fantastic yard stutter. <laughs> fantastic. I mean, she's got it going on. Yeah. So, Elise Pickett. Um, she had a gentleman on her YouTube channel um, that does worm farming in Florida, and he's using a bathtub, mm-hmm. and he has a sheet of plywood that he keeps over it for a lid. Okay. It does not have holes in it. Okay. Like, it's covered. And it's not like propped up. Nope. At all. Okay. Nope. 
Yeah. Okay. Got it. So the the lid will work. Yeah. And so he was recommending that if you're going to do the worm bin in a really hot climate to do it in the bathtub because the bathtub material tends to stay a little bit cooler, Mm -hmm. which the cooler probably would too. Right. Because it's a cooler. It's a cooler. It's It's a cooler. Thickly insulated. Yeah. Um, So in your worm bin, you basically want to have some layers built up in there. Um, Your first layer um, is going to be your bedding material. Mm -hmm. Um, And some people will even put a finished layer of compost in there. Mm -hmm. And that's just going to add bacteria and microbes to help encouraging the decomposition of everything that you end up putting in there. Right. Um, So for bedding material, um, cornmeal, wheat bran, shredded newspaper, Some people use oatmeal, um, but you want a nice deep layer, like at least three inches deep. Okay. So that's going to help catch any liquids Mm -hmm. that drain out. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, After you have your uh, bedding material in there, you're basically going to add food for your worms Mm -hmm. because you have to feed the worms. Mm -hmm. Um, And them eating... That material will help it decompose and break down and turn into worm castings, which is the ultimate goal. So um, really any kind of kitchen scraps. um, Fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables. Yeah, Yeah, fruits and vegetables, we should say, because I don't think people are putting meat in there. But um, fruits and veggies, and that's actually how they get their water also. Right. So if you're putting, you know, put a nice juicy vegetable in that because that's... That's the moisture that they're getting, that they're going to need. If they don't have that moisture, they can die too. And then I understand they need some grit. Yes, I've heard that. I don't really understand the whole grit thing. Does it help them digest? Mm -hmm. Right, like a chicken needs grit to help with like the digestion process. Yeah, they have actually an organ called their crop. Okay. So um, I understand broken up eggshells is like one of the better things you can use for that. Okay. Okay. I right, which most people have, most you people know. Most people have, and coffee grounds can work as a grit also. Nice. Yeah, I think you don't want to overdo it. You'll, you'll like, over-acidify mm-hmm. your, your, their food or the bin or whatever. Right. But um, definitely some coffee grounds are a good thing to put in. Okay. So. You know, and it seems like, really, after you have, like, your bin situated and your lid situated and you purchase your worms... I think it's easy. It's easy, it, it sounds, sounds like, easy. and it's free after right. you get your setup done. We should clarify, we don't have experience in the worm bin. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. But this is our exhaustive research, right? right? <laughs> this is the research that we have done. <laughs> yes, yes. And we're adding this too. So we'll come back and let you know how it goes. But yeah, so like dead leaves, and then you want to layer it up like you do compost, right? Right, Right, yeah. You'll have your greens and your browns, Mm -hmm. um, a little bit of moisture, um, you know, just moisture in your materials, though. Like, Mm -hmm. you don't want to actually put water in there because they can drown. Right, right. So So then as they eat the scraps you put in there, they move up to the top, and then liquid drains to the bottom. Mm -hmm. So... I'm thinking, how do you how do you harvest? Like, how do you get the, the worm castings? What you do, from what I understand, is if, once you think that you have like a bulk of material that's finished, mm-hmm. you move all of that over to one side of your bin, mm-hmm. and then you start building a new pile on the empty side of your bin. Right. So then you can you can start to harvest from the one side, mm-hmm. and eventually it's just a it's it's a cycle. Right. Yeah, I'm super excited. I might even force these tomatoes to hurry up so I can do it now. (laughs) And from what I understand, you can have a finished compost out of your worm bin in like four to six weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's great. Yeah. And and again, like you don't have to use that. If you're looking at it as like a bulk compost, that's not, that's not what it is. It's an amendment to add to your bulk soils and that. Right. right? So you can use it, again, you can use it as a spray. You can um, just water it down to water your plants with. You can sprinkle it here and there underneath your plants. Yeah, you can use it as like a side dress Mm -hmm. or whenever I plant my tomatoes, I usually do worm castings, Epsom salts, Mm -hmm. and crushed up eggshells in the transplant hole. Right. 
So those are all good fertilizers for you that don't have an NPK count right. <laughs> that you can buy if you're under the fertilizer ban. That you can buy and not have to worry about code enforcement if you need to fertilize your dang garden. Right. Right. I've done like some of the <laughs> simplest things I've done before are to put in my blender banana uh-huh. peels, yeah. uh, used coffee grounds, and eggshells. J- those three things. Right. And, um, you know, blend it, add it to a bucket with water, and it's good. Yeah. Right. Pour it, pour it at like a side dressing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that's all been good. Another thing you can use is, um, if you have like health, good, healthy, green, leafy plants, you can strip some of the, you know, prune back yep. some of those plants, strip the good leaves, things like comfrey. Mm-hmm. Um, Moringa is supposed to be good for this. Moringa, John had said, for feeding other yep. plants. So these are good, healthy plants. They don't have any disease or pests right. or anything like that. And, um, you know, so the hormones in the plant, or for lack of a better word, like they're not triggered against disease, right? Right. And, um, you grind those up and put them in water and spray your plants that are having a hard time. Mm-hmm. And it not only fertilizes them, since that's, you know, in context of what we're dealing with today, but it also gives them like an immune boost uh, Interesting. from the healthy plants. From the healthy plants. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That Isn't is so that cool. I've never heard that before. I think it's so cool. I think plants are just fascinating that way. Yeah, that is so cool. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So you yeah. get you get the benefit of the nutrients in the plants. Right. But you also get the benefit of here be healthy. This is how you it's like you're showing them this is this is a healthy plant. Be like it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. And I mean really another like super simple way that you can use cuttings off of healthy plants is just to mulch around mm-hmm. other plants. Chop and drop. Chop and drop, mm-hmm. you know. I've been trying to do that with my fruit trees lately a lot. Yeah. Just really keep on adding stuff to it cuz I mean it, it'll take time to break down and right. to eventually feed them, but it's right. basically a slow release fertilizer. Yeah. Yeah. I just did some um like pulling grass back and that kind of thing from some fruit trees laid down some new cardboard and some compost on top of that just to try to yeah keep I want to keep the the grass competition down is the big thing but the compost Good to feed gravy, them the grass yeah 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 my, it's not even the rainy season for us <laughs> it's not even the rainy, rainy season but my my garden is slowly starting to approach minor jungle mm-hmm. stage mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um i just mowed so much i can't get day. my mower to start <sighs> I know, but I have my little electric Ryobi weed whacker. I'm go. still taking that weed whacker <laughs> through the garden. So yeah. just got to stay on top of it, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just mowed a ton. Like all my pathways got mowed. Yeah. And, um, you know, some some beds that were kind of getting taken over also. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so those are, those are all some good fertilizer workarounds of not putting fertilizer in your garden. Right. So, you know, and... Okay, say you only have, like, one thing that you can use as, like, a natural fertilizer in a garden. Like, say if you only have chicken manure, Mm -hmm. you can take just a plain bucket of water and just put the chicken manure in the bucket of water. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be blood and bones and fish and clippings and blah, blah, blah. It doesn't have to be all that. Mm -hmm. It can be as simple as just diluting some chicken manure. Right. Or just letting a pile of chicken manure compost down so it's not hot. Right doesn't have to be complicated. No, it doesn't have to be complicated. And on that note, like I think it's, I have always thought it would be super cool to do like an in bed compost system, mm-hmm. like, a, like a trench, channel. Trench a tr- composting. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. And, and fill that up with some, I don't know, kitchen scraps and, exactly. and manure. Exactly. Fill it up with kitchen scraps bury it Mm -hmm. and that stuff is just going to break down over time like you never have to turn it Mm -hmm. you never have to deal with it again but eventually it's going to feed your plants right which reminds me of another thing that i was thinking of earlier and it goes back to the whole like worm farming thing and i think it would work good in your garden because you have a massive amount of raised beds Mm -hmm. so you see this thing, people take like a big PVC pipe Mm -hmm. and they drill a bunch of holes in the bottom of it and you sink that PVC pipe down into the center of your raised beds. Just straight down. Straight down. And then you have like, I don't know, maybe a couple feet of the big PVC pipe sticking up and you want to do like the big like six inch PVC. Okay. 
And so once you get that sunken down in the ground, you put a bunch of kitchen scrap, you build a worm bin okay. inside the tube, and the worms are free they to go it, yeah. in and out of those little holes. And right. so they're cruising around the garden, but they're always going to come back to home base where you're constantly feeding those kitchen scraps nice. down that PVC pipe. That sounds like our it's tomato like a bucket built in system we did. Kind, uh, kind of. On the same... <laughs> Drill holes in the in the five oh, yeah, gallon yeah. bucket, sink yeah. the bucket, plant the tomatoes around yes. it, and then you're watering through the you're bucket. You're watering that. You can put chicken the manure bucket. in right. the bucket. Right. right. So kind of kind of that same thing. So you could you could do a couple of those in a bed, right? I want you to do that in your garden. Yes, ma'am. I'll do it. <laughs> I will do it. I, ha- I mean, we have some scrap PVC laying around. There's no reason I can't do it. Right. I mean, test it out in I a will. couple of beds. I will throw some scraps in there and just see what happens. Why not? I mean, it might take it a while to get going, but. So I need to buy these red wigglers. Yes. Um, Uncle Jim's Worm Farm. Yes. I bought black soldier fly larvae from them. Did you? Online. Yeah. I haven't bought red wigglers, but I I know that they sell them. I also... Can you get them at the bait store? heard that Walmart has them in their fishing department. Right. Mm-hmm. In the so, cooler. In the cooler, yeah. Mm-hmm. I might do that. In the little styrofoam container. Because that's instant gratification. Right. <laughs> and let's face it, that's where I'm at. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm excited to do all of that. Is, is there another kind of worm, do you know, besides the red wiggler? Is there another... I mean, you can, some people use those mealworms, which is actually the larva of the darkling beetle. Yeah, I'm not interested. Um, they're kind of like maggots. Like, that's good for feeding chickens. It is. Right? Yeah. And then letting your chickens compost stuff down. Right. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I've done the black soldier fly larva thing. It is really cool. Like, it is really cool. It's, right. It, they are fascinating to learn about. But it is like having little black maggots. Right. You know? <laughs> right. So, um, I'd rather play with earthworms. Yeah. That's just my personal opinion. Yeah. The gross factor isn't nearly as bad. And, then, I mean, you guys hear us talking about some gross stuff. Yeah. Like, we're gross. Right. I mean, I'm rotting down fish right. in my exactly. garden. Exactly. We're talking about poop and blood <laughs> and peeing in a bucket. You know? I mean, <laughs> we're gross. <laughs> Maggots is where I draw the line. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we hope you guys found something right valid <laughs> and applicable some, for you. Some little golden nugget. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Out of this. Um, overfertilization in our waterways is a real problem. It is. And um, these are all of these alternatives that we're talking about. They are a, a milder Fertilizer, right? They're not a high nitrogen or a, a high. Was it phosphorus? Is the other one? Yeah, nitrogen and phosphorus. Um, they're not super high in those, and so um, we're not worried about runoff. And they also, I think, they break down faster. Yeah. Yep. Through these methods, so yep. do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do Pick it. your favorite and just do it. Just do it. Just do it, and let us know how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Until next time. Until next time. Thanks, y'all. Bye. Bye.